there's a whole story behind that, a whole history where in the 80s and 90s, there was a problem where people were entering magnetic fields. And what happens when you, this, hap, this is what devices have done for decades. When you use a magnet, and I'm going to actually show you a magnet. This is a really big one. Here's a smaller one. If you place a magnet on a device, um, what happens with, with pacemakers is most of them, they switch modes. So you, your pacemaker is in a mode and it's giving you treatment the way your doctor wants it to. If you put a magnet on top of a device, you're, you're telling the device, I want you to do something different. And that something different is it switch modes, pacemaker switch mode to what's called asynchronous pacing. So it's no longer looking at your heart, determining if you need help. It's mm -hmm. just saying, I'm going to pace you at a constant rate, no matter what. And that's what it does when a, pace, when a, a magnet is on a pacemaker. Um, this is used by clinicians sometimes when they need to run tests or they want to see how the device is working. Uh, it's, it's actually a design feature. It's not a flaw. It's intended. So you put a magnet on a pacemaker, it switches modes, it paces you at 85 to 110 beats a minute, depending on what company device you have. Yeah. And then when you take the magnet off, your device goes right back to what it was doing. So no, there's no harm to the device at all. Wait, is that actually when I go to the, to the cardiologist for my checkups, they lay something on my ICD. Is that a magnet? Uh, is that something? a programming head. So it's connected to a oh. programmer. It does have yeah. a magnet in it. Um, and so, yeah, it does have a magnet in it. So if, depending on how your device is programmed, that, that switch in modes will be automatic or it will not occur. Okay. Okay. Mine is set. I think most of them are set where when they place the programming head on the device, the device recognizes the programming head and ignores yeah. the magnet. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. With, with ICDs though, the problem is if you put an IC, a magnet on an ICD, it doesn't do anything to the pacing side of it, but what it does is it's, it, it's called inhibiting detections. It basically tells the device don't look at the heart right now. And, and so when not looking at the heart, I mean, it looks at the heart, it's still looking at it, but it, it says, don't do anything that, with what you see. So it's kind of blinding the device. It prevents the device from shocking. That's what it does. So you place a magnet on a defibrillator, it won't shock. And this is used mostly during surgeries. Like doctors are doing delicate surgery. They, they don't want you to go into cardiac arrest and then your device to shock you and your body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. Uh, they, they will protect you externally from that. But yeah. they don't want your device to do that. And so rather than having to have a company rep or a device tech come in and use a program yeah. and change the programming mm. so that it doesn't shock, just put a magnet on it. Mm. It's a simple way to make it not shock. So in the surgery, you'll have a magnet just like this one, actually, sitting on your heart and it won't shock. Take it off, no problem. So in the 80s and 90s, what they were finding is that people were going through airport security. They were, going, they were encountering magnets and their device was switching to that mode, but it wasn't switching out. <laughs> and they didn't know, the patients didn't know that. Wow. So pacemaker patients were being paced at 85 beats a minute. And that's harmless, but it's annoying because you're trying to go to sleep at night and you're getting paced yeah, at 85 yeah. or you're trying to exercise and you're getting paced at 85. So they would go to their doctors feeling horrible and they would find this problem and they would change the device out because the, the programming mode was stuck. With defibrillator patients, though, they wouldn't know that they had a problem until they had a cardiac arrest and the device didn't work. Yeah, And so... Patients were dying. Not a lot, just a couple. Yeah. But the device companies as a whole realized that this is a design problem that we, they needed to fix. And so what they discovered is that there's this little component inside the device that's called a reed switch. It's these two little metal prongs that when they come into contact with a magnetic field, they connect and they magnetize and they connect and they complete a circuit. And that switches the device to the other mode. And when you leave the magnetic field, they would separate. And they were in a uh, vacuum sealed tube. And this was about the size of a grain of rice. So these little, little uh, hairs, they're little hairs of metal, they're tiny. And what was happening is that little vacuum sealed tube was getting cracked, maybe through movement or falling or sports or whatever. And humidity was leaking in and condensing on those little leads. So when they connected, they had this little ball of water that was holding them together and they wouldn't separate. So in the 90s, they changed the design of the device. They removed the reed switch completely. They said, this is a mechanical part that's failing. Let's get rid of it and put something else in. And they replaced it with something called a Hall Effect Sensor. And this is just a sensor that says, hey, I'm in a magnetic field. I'm going to switch modes electronically. And then it detects mm -hmm. that it's not in a magnetic field. It switches back. Much lower failure rate. I mean, almost zero failure rate. So yeah. they've changed the design of the, of the device because of this problem. But that's not a quick change. That's not something you can do in a year and then have all the devices be you know, safe. It takes you know, three to five years to, to get this changed through the FDA, through the other regulatory bodies. 
And then it takes 10 years to replace all the devices that are out there. Right. So yeah. In the 80s and 90s, they went out and said, tell the doctors, tell your patients, don't play with magnets, don't go through airport security. And that message has stuck, unfortunately. But starting in about 2010, these new devices were on the market. Yeah. So if you've had an implant in the last 12, 13 years of any kind, you have a device that does not have a read switch. It has a Hall effect sensor, and it is safe in a security environment. Right. At the same time, the security has changed. So they're using much lower levels of magnetic energy. They're much faster. So if you are in a field and your body, your device does react, you're only in that field for a second or two. And your device will switch to one mode and come back to the other. Simple as that. No harm, no doubt, no foul. Um, even the, the millimeter wave scanners, the ones where you put your hands up, those don't even use magnetic energy now. So if, if I had to say that what's the safest airport security measure, it's the one that rotates around you, but they're all safe. You can use them all. And what I do, I just go through airport security. I, I, you know, just like everybody else, I go through. And once in a while, it'll pick up on the fact that I have metal in my body. And uh, you know, the agent will say, oh, do you have anything in your pockets? And I'll say, no, but I have a, I have a pacemaker. I use the word pacemaker rather than defibrillator. It's, it's more well-known. I say, no, but I have a pacemaker. Oh, okay. You know, they say, can I wand you? Yeah, sure. And they, they wand me and they go over my device and that's okay. And then I'm on my way. All right. So that's good info. So people shouldn't worry about air, airport security. No. And the problem is when you're standing in line mm -hmm. at airports in the U.S., there are often signs that say no pacemakers. Oh, in and Belgium too. That's true. Yeah. I've seen because that because they actually. haven't updated yeah. their information Nobody's uh, nobody's gone back out. None of the companies have gone back out with a effort or a message uh, to tell their doctors specifically it's okay, it's okay, it's safe now. We haven't worked with the TSA to change that. That's something that'll have to be done. Uh, something I'd like to do in the future if I ever get the chance to. So, so yeah, there's some info that's not up to date yet. Uh, right. <laughs> okay. All right, but uh, this is good. This is good for people uh, to know what you just shared.